And welcome back into High School Sports Extra presented by Nicolet National Bank. From the FVA to the Bay to the NEC, there were a lot of big games in the Apton area with conference implications this past week. Joining me now to break it all down is Ricardo Arguello of the Post Crescent. Ricardo? Can you believe it's been like a month and a half since we've done this? I know, right? You've been missing me. Is that what I, it is? Well, okay. you know, there were the holidays <laughs> and the new year, and I, I didn't know if you'd ever be back. But you took some time off on a very busy week for you guys over there at the Post Crescent. Yeah. It's January week. Tell January us a little bit week. about that. Yeah, that's something, uh, a, a great uh, string of, uh, I guess, basketball-related things that we do uh, uh, put together by Brett Christofferson every week or uh, every year now for the last, I want to say, seven or eight years. Uh, lots of fun. We just kind of concentrated in January, though, because of the January, the little connotation mm -hmm. there and everything. But, yeah, this week was big for us. We had three boys games that we live-streamed. The varsity roundtable, we featured the Freedom Girls basketball team, and it, it's been great. And uh, it's something we look forward to every year over there at the Post Crescent. And uh, like you said, there was no shortage of games to focus on this week. Let's go back to Thursday night, maybe the one the whole state was talking about, at least in this neck of the woods, when Kimberly... Went on the road to take on Kakana. Now the papermakers coming off that upset loss to Oshkosh West. They were down in the second half, and, you know, they showed what they were made of a little bit on the road. I thought they showed a lot of moxie. You know, Kimberly uh, took care of them in the first meeting between the two teams. That was over at Jack with the court and Kimberly. I thought, yeah, they were down, and then they come back uh, to do it in a setting like that at Kakana. I thought spoke volumes of this team as they're continually continually trying to improve. And I know Coach Wirtz wasn't happy what happened against Oshkosh West. To see them bounce back, what, two days later, less than 48 hours later, they're getting a big win over their arch rival in Kakana. I think that speaks volumes of this team, and that's a team I really like this team, and a lot of people do. We expect to see this team contending for a possible spot down there at the Kohl Center. And the uh, Kakana loss put them in a tie for second now with an Appleton West team. That's one four straight. Now the Terrors are still a threat. Then the rest of the association just kind of beating up on each other throughout the season. Nina's sitting there at 7-4. and four. Yep. I know you saw them take on Oshkosh North this week, a team that had to replace, I guess you could say, some irreplaceable talent. They had an uphill battle to try to re replace the likes of Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> yeah, and Halliburton was actually checking out our live stream over there, uh, doing great things for Iowa State. Uh, Oshkosh, I thought they came up with a big win. This is a team I know that Coach Brad Weber is hoping is going to be you know, at a certain level, what, in a month and a half come playoff time in March. But I thought they got a big game from Dilling. I thought Hickey played well when he came in the second half, had some foul trouble in the first half. And for Nina, a little uh, frustrating loss. They had been playing so well, Ryan. They, they had won their last six games by double digits or more. They had a lot of confidence coming in and then so to take a loss like that I'm sure was frustrating for them especially doing it uh, at Nine House Fieldhouse and so Einerson Fieldhouse I should say yes. sorry and uh, and something tells me we haven't seen the last of a few upsets this year in the FBI I think we're <laughs> gonna see a couple more and the standings will be a little shaky here at the rest of the way now over in the NEC you know I was there on Thursday night and it's always a great environment when freedom oh, and yeah. Wrightstown uh, battle and the Tigers they hosted first place freedom the Irish Wrightstown comes away with a convincing win so now we have a three-way tie for first there with these two teams in Denmark. But what stood out to me in this one, and I know you've seen them as well, <laughs> Mason Hazer, 23 points, 10 of 16 shooting. The dude can score from anywhere on the floor, and he makes it look pretty easy. You know, he, you have to go out and watch him play uh, to really get a full breath of what he can do uh, as a player. He has so many, so many ways to attack the basket, shoot from the outside, shoot from the inside. You, you see some athletic plays like that. Uh, he's one of our Fab Five players, too, as well, which was released this week for the Post Crescent. And uh, he, he's fun to watch. And this NEC battle is going to come down to the final weeks. We knew it was going to come down that way. Uh, so both these teams, and obviously you talked about Denmark as well, I think you're going to see it come down to what, the final two or three games that they have. I know Wrightstown uh, is a team that has a lot of confidence, and they're a team that I know they've done some good things. They had a tough loss last year in the sectionals to Xavier. Uh, they're thinking that maybe this year they could maybe pop on a little bit farther and maybe, you know, make some noise, possible trip. Uh, again, we always talk about the KC, and they think they can make it there. You got teams like Wrightstown, teams like Kakana, who maybe didn't come in with the hype that they had right. from the previous few years. And what you're seeing is... They're finding their footing here later in the season. They're getting comfortable. Yeah, Xavier, Xavier's, a good, Xavier's kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Obviously, we know how it was a tough loss against Valders last year in that sectional final last second. It's tough, but they've, they've been able to come back. I know Nick Otto's having a big, big year for them. 
that's a team, another team to watch. And I think they like flying under the radar. Coach Klarner likes doing that and where so much spotlight was on his team last year, this year, flying under the radar. They can kind of just kind of uh, take it easy and kind of play the underdog role there. Yeah, and in the Bay Conference, you know, you're talking about Xavier. They had a big game with Menasha this week. Menasha kind of putting themselves on the map uh, on the high school hardwood this year as well in that Bay Conference, which a lot of people will say, uh, you know, a little bit down this year maybe uh, overall, but uh, it was a 10-point victory for the Hawks, and they have three losses this year to Division I Appleton East, Division I Green Bay Preble, and a three-point defeat to Seymour, who hasn't lost in conference yet. Uh, again, and, and Coach Klarner, uh, this is what he wants, though, his team to kind of not be the favorite in, in, in the sense of that there's so much pressure on them because last year, you know, to riding undefeated and being top-ranked and all this kind of stuff, the best backcourt in the, in the state, arguably. Yeah. And now these guys are just going out there and playing, Ryan. They're just going out there and doing their thing. Xavier still has the offensive firepower. He kind of puts guys in there in the best positions. I think Clarn is one of the more underrated coaches uh, in our area as well. And, uh, yeah, they, they had a big win over Menasha. Uh, you know, uh, you talked about those losses. I think that's very important to point out because people kind of see those losses. Where is the Bay down maybe this year? We don't kind of know, but I don't think so. I think Xavier has shown that they are, they're a competitor and they're a team that's going to be there at the end. And to the girls' side now, uh, we, I think the last time we chatted, we were talking about the Kimberly girls kind of being the clear favorite and the leader in the FVA. Well, there's been some chaos in that conference. We entered last night's action with a four-way tie for first, but then Appleton East beats Hortonville. And now it's a three-way uh, tie at the top. Papermakers, back-to-back -back reigning champs from Appleton North and the Patriots. Yeah, and I, I, let, me, let me take a little time out to talk about Appleton East because this is a team that's led basically by a freshman, Emily LaChapelle. She's the, the coach's daughter, uh, Joel LaChapelle. Uh, this team is for real. People kind of talk about Appleton North, the two-time defending state champs, fine. People talk about Kimberly always up there uh, in the FEA, great. But Appleton East, this is a team that's young, this is a team that's hungry, and uh, this is a team from when they were on the varsity roundtable. I could get a sense of confidence about them that, that is really encouraging to see because I think they, they think they can go out and beat anybody in the state uh, at any level. So. Look out for them at the end. I'm, I don't want to go on a limb and say that they're going to win the conference, but I think they're going to be there right at the end. I think they have a great shot at coming away with their first championship in the conference since, I think, 2011. Wow, and you, said, you mentioned the word state. Hortonville was at state last year right. in Division II, and they are state-ranked this year, so that is another legit win that Alton East is stacking up. How about the Northeastern now? Fifth-ranked Freedom remains atop that conference, although maybe a little close for comfort last night with a 43-36 road win at FVL. They'll take it, though, no doubt. I know you came away impressed when they played Wrightstown a few weeks ago when we were both there. 11 straight wins now for the Irish. And what kind of makes them good in your mind? I think, well, they, they got the inside-outside game. Taylor, Taylor Hazy is one of the best post players around. They got Genki, who's the Division I recruit, one of our Fab Five. Think about that. A lot of times, Genki isn't even the focal point of, of a lot of teams because they, they have so many other options that they can go to. I think this is a team, I think, that has the roster, they have the coaching, and they're going to have the resume to really do some damage. I expect them to be at the rec center, to tell you the truth, at the, at, when it's all said and done. That's, that's saying a lot because they're playing a lot of great teams in their own conference. And Genki's got a lot of D1 offers already. That Wrightstown game, by the way, she didn't make a field goal and they won exactly. by what? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Well, that's all the time we have this week in the Prep Spotlight. He is Ricardo Arguello. Ricardo, once again, thanks for all Thank the knowledge. You. Check him out. Watch, listen, and read all this great work at the Post Crescent and follow him on Twitter at PC Ricardo. We'll see you down the line. Dick, for sure. All right. When we come back on High School Sports Extra, time to wrap up the show with the Local 5 Top 5 Plays, Team of the Week, and more. So keep it here.